We come now to the subject of graph theory. Graph theory is a very important part of mathematics. It's, it's an area in mathematics that has um, an awful lot of application in all sorts of areas, all sorts of disciplines. All sorts of problems can be modeled and then attacked um, based on this idea of a, of, gra of a graph in mathematics. So we have graphs, and we also have directed graphs. Directed graphs are also known as digraphs. Um, very first thing to realize here is that when we say graph, we are absolutely not referring to the kind of graph or graphing that you, you learned in high school. In other words, when you plot y as a function of x kind of thing, yeah, that sense of graph um, has absolutely nothing to do with what we're talking about here. This, this usage of the word graph is completely different. Okay? So um, a graph really consists of two things. It consists of what are called vertices and edges. All right? When we do things visually, draw pictures, the vertices are really just dots. And the edges are little line segments, possibly curvy line segments that connect dots. Okay? Um, that is the useful way of thinking of graphs visually, but it's um, not the only way we're going to think about graphs. It's very possible that you've studied graph theory in a, in a prior course. You may have taken a discrete math course in, uh, in college. Um, I am certainly not going to assume this. I will be proceeding here um, with the assumption that, you, you, that all this material is new to you. So if some of it is, 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 is familiar to you, you, you may, may want to go through it a little quicker than uh, the lecture speed here. Okay, so the truth is we approach graphs visually. You're kind of motivated by drawing pictures, but um, we want to do things with a certain kind of precision. And so we're going to treat graphs as um, based on sets. Okay, in mathematics, there's a rigorous notion of a set. Uh, there's a whole area call, of mathematics called set theory. And the idea is that a set is a collection of other mathematical objects. Okay, um, hopefully, if, you're, if this is all new to you, um, as, as we start going through it, we'll be developing you know, some set theory as we're doing graph theory at the same time. Okay, so I say again that, that visually a graph consists of a bunch of points or dots. These are called vertices and lines that connect the dots, and these are called edges. Okay, and by the way, the, the singular of vertices is vertex. So here's a picture that captures a sense of what we're talking about. This would be a picture of a graph that contains one, two, three, four, five, six, seven vertices and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven edges. Okay? Each edge connects a pair of vertices. Now, it's important to realize what we care about and what we don't care about in this. Um, the placement of the vertices in the picture is irrelevant um, for the purposes of graph theory. Okay, where we, where we choose to draw the vertices is, is completely irrelevant. The only thing that matters really is how many vertices do we have, how many edges do we have, and, you know, which vertices are connected by edges. Okay, so this particular graph could be redrawn in several ways. And I want you to notice that we have two edges that cross in this picture. Um, they do not meet at a vertex. They are just crossing. And the fact that they're crossing in this picture, again, is completely irrelevant um, for our purposes. Okay? It, it's to be ignored, really. Oh, and also notice that one of the edges I drew was kind of curvy. Um, that also is irrelevant. 
So I say again, all that matters is, you know, how many vertices, how many edges, and which, which pairs of vertices are connected by edges. We say that two vertices are adjacent if there's an edge connecting them. We're going to make the assumption that given any two vertices, there's at most one edge connecting them. Okay, there's a more general sense of graphs in which you're allowed to have multiple edges connecting a pair of vertices. Um, sometimes people give a special name to that, refer to it as a multigraph. Um, we're not going to focus on multigraphs here. So we're just going to assume that if you have a pair of vertices, either they're adjacent or not adjacent. If they are adjacent, then there's exactly one edge connecting them. And if they are not adjacent, if they are not adjacent, then there are no edges connecting them um, directly. Right. So we can label vertices, as you saw in the previous slide. Um, I gave a name to each of the vertices to distinguish each, each of the vert. Yeah, each of the vertices to distinguish it. So I have, for example, vertex A in that diagram is adjacent to vertex E. Okay? Yeah, trust me or go back and look at it. <laughs> um, now, 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 this is where we get mathematically a little bit more rigorous about things. Um, we consider that, that the edge connecting vertex A to vertex E is actually what's called a set in mathematics. And that set consists of the two vertices that are connected. So the notation for the set containing A and E is like this, curly brackets, A, comma, E, curly bracket. Okay? The order in which you write A and E is irrelevant. So curly bracket A, comma, E, curly bracket is the same thing as curly bracket E, comma a curly bracket okay mathematically that's referred to as a set and technically that's what the edge is okay it's true that we have a, a drawing a picture and so forth but the picture is just a representation of things to help us think about graphs technically we want to think of the graph as consisting of vertices and edges, and the edges are sets of vertices, each one containing exactly two vertices. Okay, so here's a list of all the edges in the above graph, right? There's the set containing A and E, that's one edge, the set containing B and C, that's another edge, and so forth. Now, we're going to need the notion of a path in a graph, um, but here we're dealing with something that's pretty intuitive. Again, it really helps to think in terms of the pictures. You might feel like, well, why are we doing all this stuff with sets and so forth? The pictures do a much better job of conveying the idea of things. Um, well, that, that, it, that is largely true, that the pictures are very helpful, but for certain technical things, um, it's also quite helpful to have the rigorous set theoretic uh, foundation for graphs. Okay, so we're going to use them both pretty much interchangeably. Okay, but conceptually a path is what you think it is. If you had a picture, you had graph in front of you drawn, um, a path would be like starting at a vertex, following an edge to get to another vertex, then following an edge from there to get to another vertex, and so on and so forth, you know, following as many edges as you like until you get to a final destination vertex. That's what we mean by a path. We'll uh, make the assumption here, and, 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 and different names are associated with different kinds of paths that have restrictive properties. I don't want to get buried in the difference between a trail and a path and, and some other things. Um, we're just going to go ahead here and assume that when we deal with paths, um, we will never have, uh, we will not reuse an edge, okay? 
our paths will not reuse edges, but they might cross through the same vertex two or more times. Okay, the length of a path then simply means the number of edges that are used in the path. Okay, so if you simply go from one vertex to another vertex along an edge, that's a path of length one. If you instead go from vertex to another vertex and then to another vertex, that's a path of length two. Um, a path of length two would involve three vertices, but only involve two edges. Okay, so again, it's the number of edges that determine the length of the path. And I want to point out that there's an extreme case here, too. We have, we have to include the notion of a path of length zero. Okay, this might sound like an absurdity to you, but it's actually technically important to capture the extreme case here. Um, we might be in a vertex and not use any paths, oh, sorry, not any edges, and simply stay at that vertex. And we would refer to that as following a path of length zero. Okay, no edges. So um, going back to previous slide, if, if you want to flip back to that, go ahead. But um, as an example, you could start at the vertex E, follow an edge to get to the vertex G, follow another edge to get from G to C, follow another edge to get from C to D, and you would have um, followed a path of length 3. Okay, again, three edges here, even though there are four vertices. And that would be said to be a path that connects E to D. I say again, paths of length zero, that's an admitted, that's an allowable idea here. Okay, path of length zero starts at a vertex and doesn't go anywhere. Okay, now um, a very important um, technical idea in a graph is the idea of um, connected. Okay, a graph might or might not be connected. Um, we say that a graph is connected if it's possible to go from any vertex to any other vertex along some path. Okay? You might think that that's a given, that that's automatic, but you'd be wrong. That is not um, true. There are, we have to admit the idea of a graph that, that might not be connected. We can have graphs that are not connected. Okay, here's an example of a disconnected graph. A disconnected graph is a graph that is not connected, right? You might just picture and say, well, that's not a graph, that's three different graphs. No, um, no. In the context that we're looking at this now, we're thinking of this as a single graph. This is one graph that has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, vertices, and it has one, two, three, four, five edges. Okay? And it is clearly disconnected. All right? For example, there's no way to get from vertex A to vertex E. Um, along a path, okay? Um, we're going to introduce this formally later, but as long as we have the picture in front of us, um, I say again, we want to think of this as one single graph, but we would say that this graph is subdivided into three connected components, okay? So one the connected component that consists of A, B, C, and D. The connected component consisting of A, B, C, and D is a subgraph of the original graph, okay? Um, it's a portion of the original graph, and it's a connected component because it basically um, is connected and, and, and nothing else is connected to it. So we have a connected component consisting of A, B, C, and D, there's another connected component that consists just of the vertex E and nothing else. And there's yet another connected component that consists of the vertices F and G and the edge between them. Now, to lay out this graph formally, describe it formally, uh, you know, mathematically, <clears throat> um, we would say that this graph consists of 
the seven vertices A, B, C, D, E, F, together with the edges A, B, B, C, A, C, C, D, and F, G. And again, each of those edges um, consists of a, is, is really a set consisting of two vertices. Okay, and, and here is this idea of a connected component, right? The graph we're looking at has three connected components. Um, one connected component consists of the vertices A, B, C, and D, together with the edges between them. Another connected component consists only of E. And finally, the third connected component consists of the vertices F and G and the edge between them. Um, an important problem that comes up in a lot of practical applications and, and, and computer programs oftentimes have to uh, determine the answer to this question is whether or not it's possible to get from one vertex to another vertex along a path. Okay? Stated differently, the question is, do these two vertices belong to the same connected component? We're going to consider this problem again later, and we're going to think about algorithms um, that are useful and, and, and in deciding not only can you get from one vertex to another, but if you can, you know, what's the most efficient way to do that? Okay, a shortest path um, connecting two vertices would be a path that has the, the shortest length, right? Uh, so, as I say, um, we'll be considering well, a particular algorithm later for finding a shortest path, a path of least length connecting two vertices.